In this video, we'll be trimming the body, making the pocket neck, and sanding the body. So first, we want to look at the body as it came out of the mold. Uh, oftentimes, the siding won't be firmly attached to that plywood block. If so, um, put some super glue in there, an accelerator, and hold it tight. Similarly, check this joint. Uh, we want to see no gap there, so super glue that if uh, there is a gap. So now we'll go to Loma 7, the wood shop, to trim the top and back. Okay, this is called a trim router, and the bit that's on it is called a flush trim bit. And it consists of that bearing, a ball bearing on top, and the cutter below. And the idea of this bit is that the bearing is going to follow the siding surface and the cutter will trim any of the excess back or top that protrudes beyond the siding. So those two are synchronized so that uh, you, get, you get a flush trim. Uh, the router has a power switch that's a little unusual. You can see you pull up on that rear section and you'll set the speed to between 1 and 2. Okay, so we use these rubber pucks to uh, support the body and a helper is very helpful to, uh, to have a hand on the body to keep it stable and also to control the cord. So we move in a counterclockwise direction and my left hand there is pulling the router in while my right hand is pushing down and helping guide it. So we want to keep the ball bearing on the siding so we can trim all of the um, excess wood. But we'll do another pass in case you miss anything. So the helpers, uh, so sometimes um, after you do the first pass, you'll get those little bits of glue. So that's squeeze out. Um, just use a sandy block to correct that. Uh, do two passes on the back, uh, for rough and a finished pass, and now go on to the top. And here we are rounding the top very similarly. You can see some of that um, squeeze out and stuff. So sandy block and another pass will fix that. Okay, the, the routed corners are a little rough and so we're going to use uh, some sandpaper to smooth these out. So that's 120 grit, one inch wide. Uh, rip off about five or six inches and fold it over into, uh, into fourths. Uh, this is a different kind of sandpaper, I'll sh but it shows the process. So here we have the sandpaper folded over into um, four layers and then if you wrap it around like you see there uh, it'll make a nice uh, rounded edge very easily. Okay and now we're going to prepare the pocket neck joint. So on the center table in Loma 5 you'll find these tools uh, and some similar ones. And we'll start by using a thin blade. Uh, this is a hacksaw but some of those other um, blades are better. You cut just inside the laser cut edges almost to the bottom of the floor of that pocket. And uh, take small cuts so you're careful. Okay, now use a knife and score the plywood just above the floor. So a score is, means a, a little cut in the surface of it. So it makes a weak spot because now if you push, and if you push hard enough, it'll break those off. And then we can use a medium file to finish it. So we're going to keep filing until the siding is flush with that bottom plywood. And on the left and right sides, we'll, like right there, we'll be filing until it's like a, um, it drops straight down from the laser cut edge. Okay, and in terms of the laser cut edge, edge itself, um, you can just give a little brush pass. Don't take off much material, just um, get rid of the high spots. Okay, now make a mark that's uh, a centerline mark near the tail. And this mark is one quarter inch in front of the laser cut edge. And make a little um, indentation with a punch. And now use a 3 16 drill. You want to hang this drill out uh, as far as possible uh, from the chuck. And we're going to drill through that hole. And you can see there, there's a risk of damaging the top. So um, I would suggest using a piece of plywood like that to protect the top from the drill. This is a quarter 20 tap and um, you want to take it down just until that shank reaches the wood. 
uh, don't go beyond that that would destroy your threads and I usually find it's helpful to run the sh uh, tap in twice that will give you a nice clean thread okay now uh, there's a quarter 20 bolt that's on the center table and you thread that in from the back side like that and keep threading it up until it just reaches the surface and uh, we'll adjust it later but you can have it installed Okay, now you should find some, these are called transfer punches, and these will screw into your neck uh, with the pointy ends up. Uh, they're, they're painted red and they should be on the center table. Uh, so screw these in as best you can. Uh, and the main thing is they need to be level, so the same height. And now install your neck and uh, hold the neck parallel to the body and push down while the neck's also all the way into the pocket. You can see those little dents that it makes. Uh, okay, take those dents and make them a little more distinct with a center punch. And now take a 7 16 brad point drill, and it does need to be a brad point. And this is a pretty uh, serious drill for a hand drill. So if you hold the hand drill close to your uh, body uh, against your rib cage, you get much better control as it goes in. And you see I'm using a piece of uh, wood to protect the top in case it um, goes down too quickly. You can use medium or high speed on the drill and um, whatever pressure feels right to you. And this is just cleaning up those holes. You could use a file or however you like to get rid of the, uh, the burrs on the hole. Now let's test fit our neck. Uh, so we screw the studs, these are on the center table again, and into the um, inserts. Now the, they're not necessarily going to be straight, so you, often you can use your hand pressure to get them a little more parallel. And then test fit that. And the main thing you want to see is that it goes all the way to the back of the pocket. Uh, in some cases we'll need to drill those 7 16 holes bigger to make that happen. And here I'm using a vacuum to get rid of the, um, the drill debris. Okay, we'll start with a 120 grit sanding disc and we're back in Loma 7, the wood shop, and this is a, called a random orbit sander. So these are designed to um, sand a surface without making um, any distinct pattern. That's the random orbit part. So um, turn the sander on and set it to high speed and spend about one minute, I would say, on the back panel. Uh, you, should, you, you should notice a difference uh, just with your, if you do a touch test, you'll see how much smoother it is. And after a certain point, there's no benefit to continuing to sand. Now you can do the siding with this power sander, um, but you don't have to. Here I'm showing how it can be done. Uh, it's, it can be an awkward operation, particularly in that little uh, waste area that we're about to get to. So I usually use a different method, at least for the waste. And if you have any bad spots like uh, glue drips, you can go to a coarser grit. But um, remember it's plywood and we don't want to sand through the top layer of plywood. So we just want to make a nice surface. Here's using a sanding block, uh, which works fine, and here's just a piece of paper, sanding paper, which also works very well, particularly in that waste region. So that's usually what I choose to sand the waste. Uh, that's a rubber sanding block, it's another option. Uh, your hand is a good test for whether you sand it enough. You know, if it feels smooth, it is. So here we're doing the top at 120 grit. Uh, so again, spend about one minute on this panel. And you can also visually check, uh, as we'll see in a bit. Now, optionally, if you want to get a little more um, volume and responsiveness and bass out of your guitar, you can do some extra sanding. Um, just sand the outer inch and a half of the lower bout for about one minute. And you're trying to thin it about 20%. Here's uh, what the surface you're looking for, so look for scratches. And optionally, you can now switch to 180 grit and sand everything again. And this should not take as much work because we're just trying to uh, take the 120 to 180 instead of um, taking the raw surface to a, a smooth surface. 
So one, a second pass at 180 on the siding. That's a, a, a technique that works well for the siding if, if, if you want to use the power sander. And uh, there we are with uh, 180 or 220 on the siding and the waste area. And you probably want to be looking for glue spots. If there's any glue stain that gets onto the siding like there, that will interfere with the uh, shellac uh, wetting it. So make sure those are all removed if you want it to look good. And here we're doing 180 grit on the top. And again, about a minute. So uh, when you're done for the day, make sure you clean the dust bin. Uh, you can see that's a lot of dust, and that's important uh, for the sander to be able to extract the dust. In fact, you may want to check this before you start. If, the, if it can't extract the dust, then um, it can't sand the service very well.